Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this has not been the greatest of days. Uh, okay. Um, the I've got, I had I have some some success with uh, working with software. I've got. I've been able to go from SketchUp um, out as a DXF file and then get it into the Mach 3 and it works, um, figuring all that out, but I'm still fighting these mechanical issues and probably the best decision I made on this whole project was the one I made a few days ago which was basically stop whatever I'm doing and let's get this thing running and get it, you know, running through a couple cycles and, and see what it does. Um, and now we're at the culmination of a few runs and I'm starting to discover a lot of things and there's a lot of hindsight 2020 kind of issues here. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, I built this super ugly temporary uh, box basically just to hold the weight of the router. Um, I wanted to um, I wanted to confirm everything I'm seeing uh, with the weight of the router on the uh, machine. But um, to cut to the chase, uh, I'm, I'm still getting bounce, I'm still getting flex, and I'm still getting chatter out of the whole gantry moving forward and back, the y-axis. Um, X, X is silky smooth, Z is silky smooth. Uh, I mean, if I, if I were to get on this and really wrench on it, I mean, really, I mean, almost lean against it, you know, put my feet out and really lean against it. I can, I can probably get an eighth of an inch, a shy eighth, a strong sixteenth of deflection when the Z is all the way down, um, if I really put my weight behind it. Um, so overall, uh, I, I could probably make the, the Z and X uh, tighter, and we'll get to that, but, um, but happy with it. Now here is the hindsight is 2020 issue, and um, it has to do it has to do with these guys down here um, and this whole wraparound system. Uh, I talked to my father-in-law tonight, um, who most of his life uh, owned a company that builds ambulances, so he kind of knows his stuff here. And he brought up the issue with this cross member. This is the lead screw. Let's see if this will lighten up. No. Nope. Uh, here's the lead screw for the Y, um, and then this connecting rod going all the way across, and then of course wrapping around and going to the gantry. And then you have gantry, and then you've got the uh, you know the actual sideways parts of the gantry. And at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is the fact that I have a very large mass, basically as far as it possibly could be from the thing that's moving it and um, kind of just bouncing some ideas off of uh, off of him tonight and in the staring I've done in the last couple days I've sort of realized that I think it's a comedy of errors I, I think I don't think I can pin my this this chatter and this flex um, I don't think I can pin it down to one single thing um, I have Originally, I thought it was the fact that the bearing blocks were slightly kinked. Um, you can push them this way, you can push them this way, you can push them this way as hard as you want, and they're slop-free and perfect. If you kink them this way, this way against the glides, um, they, they're they chunky. And so um, I did the feeler gauge thing. Uh, I made shims. I got those perfectly parallel. I mean to the thousandth, perfectly flat, and, uh, and shimmed any curve out of my, my bases. And so the, the, the blocks were straight. I've also put a water level on these glides, and I can tell you that these glides are perfectly, perfectly level, all four corners, and perfectly parallel. I let them self-adjust by loosening them and allowing the gantry to run, and they self-adjusted. But... Um, so I, I don't think it's, I, I, I am, I'm thinking far less so about the bearings themselves being the issue. Oh, I should mention, I also ran the bearings out to the end of the plates. So I went from a six inch spread on the bearings to a 10 inch spread on the bearings. 
and um, thus losing total travel, which sucked, but, um, but again, it didn't solve the problem. And so I think it is the combination of a very tall gantry, a large weight at the top of it, a, a large stroke on the Z, which causes everything to be taller, this very wide cross member bar underneath, getting some flex, and then, you know, what is that? Three, three feet of upright segmented, you know. It's, you know, it's multiple pieces all the way up, and, and I think it's, I think it's just the multiplication of a teeny tiny bit of slop out of many places adding, adding up to um, the bounce. I'm, I'm going to entertain some um, suggestions from anybody, um, but as it stands now, I, I'm thinking of making it again. <laughs> um, my original thought, basically here, to cut to the chase, my, my thought now is fixing the gantry and sliding the table. Um, I, I, I hesitate because... Uh, my total my total travel right now is I'm getting 18 inches out of the Y, the gantry moving back and forth. And um, that's it with a 6-inch spread on my blocks. Now, here's my stop switch. My, my lead screw bottoms out before my glides do. My glides are longer than my lead screw. So my, my bearing block stops there, leaving about an inch and a half of glide left, plus or minus. So in essence... I can get 10 inches out of my bearing blocks and still maintain the 18 inches of travel. If I've got a, if I have an 18, if I have 18 inch total travel, I figure maybe a 20 inch deep table. Um, so that's going to be 10 inches on the bearing blocks, five inches hanging out of each end, um, which would be 50%, 25%, 25%, which seems like a pretty reasonable area to be. And the more I stare at this, um, the it looks as if I can literally just flip the table upside down. Um, these these glides would just turn sideways and would mount there with the rails being there, and then the table would fit in between them, and I just flip the whole darn thing over. Um, but the snowball effect from there is, well, um, if I no longer have to worry about gantry weight and I no longer have to worry about gantry height and I no longer have to worry about weight being high up on the gantry, then we're not talking about a whole heck of a lot of steel to go ahead and rebuild the gantry. And if it's going to be fixed, I can build the crap out of it. Um, I mean, I can really overbuild the bejesus out of it. Um, number one, I can take this rail and move it all the way up to the top and not have to worry about any top heavy weight. And I can stiffen up the gantry, uh, the Z axis on the X axis. I can stiffen it up this way. Um, I can, uh, I can do just massive strong backs. I could even run, you know, a guy going out and back with a guy that way and, and stiffen it up. I mean, basically I'm rambling, but I can, I can just tremendously overbuild that. I mean, if I wanted to, I could run, you know, a second guy going down like this and I could gusset this entire thing with plate steel and it ain't going anywhere. Um, at the same time, if those 10 inch, that 10 inch spread on my bearing blocks with five inches of table sticking out is still giving me a little wibbly wobbly on the table. Obviously the table is going to be the hardest thing to keep on an even plane. Um, if I have to widen those, then I'm losing travel on my y-axis, which I'm already, I've already lost travel. I, I um, just based on the offsets of these nuts and just, you know, you're not going to get full travel at everything. I mean, a 700 millimeter bearing is not going to give you 700 millimeters of travel, period. So I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that my machine is not going to be anywhere close to as big as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then I guess just one more, the advantage of um, <clears throat> the sliding table is uh, as we sit now, even if 
this herky-jerky problem was fixed, even if it was glass smooth, there is no possible way I am printing, I'm doing any 3D printing with this gantry as it sits now. Um, as a matter of fact, last night I came to the conclusion that I was going to have to build a secondary sliding table, a nice, small, lightweight table that would mount to this table to allow me to, to 3D print. Um, I can still use my x-axis that's glass smooth and it's fairly lightweight and then I could build a secondary lightweight table to do my Y um, just for printing but if I'm going to go ahead and do any kind of rebuild on the machine and I end up sliding the table instead of the gantry while I'm moving you know one tenth the weight and um, and the lead screw the thing that's actually moving the table will be that far away from the table so that just seems to make a lot more sense um, you know, maybe just in the process of making this video, I have kind of maybe sort of convinced myself of sliding the table. But, uh, but there you go. Um, I, I told you in the first post I was going to be completely honest and, and sh show you everything, warts and all, uh, screw-ups and, and learning experiences and everything else. Um, the grand scheme of things, I'm, I'm out. 70 bucks worth of steel and a whole lot of time not a whole lot of time maybe a week worth of time uh which could be worse but uh that's where we stand now um i i i i fought this chatter uh, it was a valiant effort I, I did everything i possibly could um to try to sort of make this work as it sits and um uh, it just don't seem like it gonna happen so um so there you go ladies and germs um there's tonight's blog post um the next thing you see might be me with uh two or three brand new cutoff wheels for an angle grinder and uh and earmuffs on and uh cutting this thing apart um <laughs> great day <laughs> So, um, so there you go. Okay, um, that's all I get tonight. Ding.